There you go, guys. Check that out. This is a red cat. And it is a CT70 clone. And if you're not familiar with the clones, I'll explain a little bit. And Honda in 69 started making the CT70. It really is kind of the granddad, if you will, to the ATC70. Um, and it, it's, uh, it shares a lot of the same components. You, a lot of guys are taking these and doing the, the big Piranha 140 uh, swap. They are customizing them. They're putting different forks on them. They're putting wide tires or lowering them. You, you know, boys will be boys. <laughs> and we love to modify and customize our toys. But what we have here, this is what's called a clone. This is not a Honda. And so uh, watch out for that. My understanding of, of everything that I could read online was that in the 90s, late 80s, early 90s, there was a, the, the, the CT70 was so popular that companies started copying them. Back then you had companies like Red Cat and uh, Ice Bear and Champion and there's one called Cheetah and there was just a whole lot of different companies that was copying the Honda CT70. And because of that, the market's really been flooded in the late 80s, early 90s. And a lot of these companies got cease and desist letters. And what I'm read recently is the Red Cat company was actually hailed as a pretty good company in the co meaning that they did a really good job of copying Honda. Down to the point where Honda parts will fit these bikes. So all of the aftermarket parts that are out there, the majority of them will cross over and bolt on to a aftermarket or a clone or a copy of uh, black market whatever term you want to use here's what it boils down for me this bike if it was a honda would be worth three thousand dollars which is a lot of money running driving original 1970 because that's about what this is a copy of there's slight different changes i don't know all of the changes but i know that there were different changes throughout the production years of the honda honda actually started making this again in the late 80s um, it did not take off like it did in the in the in the 60s and the 70s and so it kind of fell to the wayside again but you can actually find one of these i believe somebody will put it in the con in the comments i'm sure up until the early 90s i think 91 or 92 uh, honda finally pulled the plug on it and no longer sold them you can mail order a bike like this a clone not a honda but a clone from several companies for fifteen hundred dollars and in most states you can tag it and title it and put it on the road blinkers the whole nine yards which kind of puts the used market at a at a disadvantage um, that means that the used clones are not near as valuable as a used honda but also because you can get a new clone so cheap fifteen hundred dollars is really a steal when it's all brand new components shipped to your door with a title ready to go as opposed to buying something like this, you could put $800 in something like this really quick and still have all the hurdles of, of you know, getting it tagged and titled if that's, what your, if that's what your plans are. So be very cautious if you're going to buy a clone. Now, that being said, an original Honda with title is worth a lot. Even in non-running condition, they'll set you back two grand. It's crazy how expensive they are, but there's quality and, and people know it and, and having the real thing is always going to have, be, you know, be more valuable than a copy. Or what my intentions are for this project, I would actually rather have a clone because what I'm gonna do to it, the purist would not really want to do. And I'm not gonna do a lot to it. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna assess this together. I'm gonna to kind of point out a few things that it needs immediately. And then maybe down the road, maybe we could do some other things, some custom type work. You can rebuild this entire thing. If you just started with just the frame, which is a hollow actual uh, housing. Some people refer to it as a T-bone frame. It is because it looks kind of like a T or a T-bone stake. And it's completely hollow. That This had his electric start, which the originals did not. There's a battery and a gas tank inside the frame, believe it or not, right next to one another. But 
it's it's really a compact little unit and i think it holds like a gallon and a half of gas and will run all day we all know the 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 history on these horizontal engines they're just amazing they, they really are this of course has a, a kickstart backup electric primary um, it's four speed which is good but it's an automatic clutch a lot like our utility three wheelers exactly like the atc 70 but for me i'm just going to scoot around my neighborhood uh that's that's my plan with this it's it's a, it's a commuter bike that's how it was sold it has a little luggage rack on the back and <laughs> very little luggage rack but if if you're the intentions were for this product when they brought it over inner city college students people young people were going to ride this around as opposed to uh driving a vehicle driving a car remember 69 70 we had the gas embargo come in in 72 i think it was and so fuel and fuel economy is really what put products like this in the forefront because you could ride them all day on a gallon of gas so that's enough history on it
was a fun little trip. It's always nice to go riding around a neighborhood. And remind them that uh, <laughs> remind them I'm still back here. <laughs> yeah, so that was fun. What a beautiful day. It's uh you you could you couldn't order any better weather. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So there we go. Uh, run the numbers on this thing. It should be a late 90s clone. It's still running. I mean, look at that. I haven't put a wrench on it. I haven't done a thing to it. And <laughs> it's uh, tires are got some got some age to them. They're, they're cracked up pretty good. Um, they hold air. I haven't uh, haven't really even put any air in them either. They got some flat spots. You could probably notice that in the camera a little bit that. Uh, there was a little hop there, top end. Um, top speed probably was about 30. I don't think it was any faster than that. And there was a few times we actually, we were wide open. So they're not fast. They would be great for kids around the yard. Um, the old saying goes, if you ask a biker in their 40s or 50s, which is, which is probably the most of y'all, what was your very first motorcycle you ever rode? And it will probably, most of y'all will say one of these, an original Honda uh, CT70 or the Z50 if you were smaller. But wow, how much fun could you have on something like that? So we're not going to do a lot to it right now. I mean, I just don't see putting money into something if it doesn't need it. So that's kind of a mantra here at the shop. But uh, I think we, you know, I haven't even given it a bath yet. So let's lower the handlebars down. Let's get some sport bars on it. Let's recover that seat. And let's enjoy it like it is. Maybe we'll throw some fenders on it. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I think a bath would go a long way. Let's get the headlight working. There's one of your running lights right there we talked about. All right, so I'm always real big on telling y'all what I pay for things. And, and I don't do that to brag, by no means. I do that to encourage you so you know that there are deals to be had out there. You just gotta be diligent and you gotta be quick. This came up on Marketplace back in January and uh, and I'll tell you a little secret and, and it's some people pay attention to things like this and some people don't certain times of the year you're gonna find better deals and and so leading up to Christmas and the holidays people are selling things to kind of kick get, get some cash up to buy Christmas presents Christmas is a great time to purchase early so say around November Late November, early December is a great time to find really, really good deals. If you're selling latter part, later towards Christmas, say right at Christmas, is a better time to sell than any other time, especially if it's a toy. Uh, toys sell best at Christmas. Uh, tax return time is a great time to sell something. So people have a little extra money in their pocket and they're a little more giving and, and you know they'll, they'll buy toys. And so if you have a toy, April 15th or whatever they want to move it to these days, um, tax time is always a good time to sell. Uh, there's seasonal things too. This would not sell very well in the winter. For you, some of y'all northerners up there to see a lot of snow on the ground, <laughs> nobody wants a mini bike you know, in January. But in the summer, spring is a great time to pick one of these up or to sell one of these. So if you're, set, if you're in the market to sell, selling seasonal also has a lot to do with, with what the market is gonna stand and what, what you can sell, how quickly you can sell it for. So pay attention to that. Um, buying and selling is as much seasonal as it is anything else. It's, it's just to being in the right place at the right time. This fellow is looking probably to, to, to either probably, I guess since I got it in January, he was trying to pay off some Christmas debt that he had incurred in December. So maybe that was his reason to sell it. But that time of year is always a good opportunity to buy and to sell. So keep that in mind. What did I get for it? You really don't want to know. Um, I haven't touched it. This is exactly how we picked it up. The ad was posted and I secured it within 15 minutes of it being online. Um, my, my Uncle Larry went and picked it up. Y'all need to meet him. He is my partner in crime. He is actually, he lives an hour from me. 
And so between his house and my house, we can actually cover about three hours drive time in any given direction uh, pretty quickly. And so that's, uh, that's my ace in the hole. He is my secret weapon. Y'all wonder how I find these things. It's because I'm actually covering a lot of territory. He's looking, I'm looking. He collects things, I collect things. So if I see something that he likes, I send it to him. If he wants me to go get it and I'm closer, then I'll go get it and vice versa. And that's how this was. This little mini bike was literally 10 minutes down the road from his house, but that was an hour and 10 minutes from me. He was able to drop what he was doing. He went and got it. And Larry, thank you again. I appreciate it. We secured this for $125. I haven't done a thing to it. I will have more invested in the seat and the handlebars than I'll probably have invested in the whole bike. But that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Those are the deals that are out there. You've got to be diligent, you've got to look often, and you've got to be ready to buy. Don't be calling up asking a bunch of questions and stuff. You see something you know you want, you need to go get it. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, completely honest with you. I thought it was a Honda. But the seat torn like it was, it didn't say Honda on the back. There was only two photos, they were poorly lit. It was not, it was an impulse buy, I'm just gonna tell you. It, it checked all the right boxes. The handlebars looked right. The exhaust looked right. It looked like a Honda. I secured it for $125. I did not know it was not a Honda until after it was purchased. But that's okay. It's completely okay. When you're spending that little bit of money, it's a very small risk. And look, the, I, all the other questions paid off. The man said it ran. It's running. Oh, what more can you ask for? You really can't. So that's it. You know, going from here at $125 buy-in and we just rode it, it's nothing from up from here. There, there's really, there's no downside to this. You can you can turn around and sell it and, and, you know, five times your money. But like I said earlier in the video, you can buy a brand new one of these for $1,500 mailed to your house. FedEx will bring it to you in a box. I think you assemble the headlight, the, the handlebars, and, it's, and the wheels, and that's it. It's, it's very simple and you're up and running so you keep that in mind fifteen hundred dollars for a clone brand new a 20 year old clone is not going to be worth that much money on the open market today probably five to seven hundred dollars about half of what a new one would cost but there you go you can paint it up they're they're selling the honda decals to put on it you can make this look exactly like an original honda for pennies compared to what a honda will cost you no it won't be a honda and i'm not going to pretend that it is but if you've got something that you just want to put around the yard in or you want to put something in the, in the man cave or in the corner of the shop or maybe you want to customize one with the big piranha 190 motor and the fat tires and lower it and drag bars and all that kind of stuff then the clone's the way to go you're not cutting up an original one and, and you, you could be replaced quite cheaply. So there you go. Uh, covered a lot, but didn't do any work to this week. Again, it's Mother's Day. I hope you spent time with your mom. I spent the morning with mine and, uh, and, and I'm thankful for it. So I didn't have a whole lot of time to put this together. We've got some updates. I've been cleaning in the shop all week. And so we hauled a trailer load of stuff out of here. I know y'all can't tell, um, but I did. And so we're gonna keep doing that. I, I wanna put some racks in and, and maximize my storage a little bit more. I don't know if I'm gonna run a rack down the middle of the building here and put three wheelers up on it, but I, I feel like I need to get my floor space back. So that's, uh, that's, that's exciting. It's, it's, we're to the point where I don't wanna get rid of them because I won't have content for you. And because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fearful that I could replace them, the ones I have. So I'm gonna hold on to what we have except for a few and kind of move some things around. We've got to get the table cleaned back up because next video should be an engine rebuild video. And so I'm looking forward to that. That 350X is gonna be back up and running pretty soon. And uh, that's going to be a, a big day. So I'm excited about it. So again, happy Mother's Day. I keep looking over my shoulder because Chloe's out in the yard. I was waiting to see if she'd make an appearance or not. Uh, but you know, a lot of y'all ask about Chloe. Chloe's doing good. She uh, She's on the front. Look at that. Look at that. That's a train. I trained her. Good job, Chloe. Right on her cue. Do you see that? Look at that. Chloe's here, y'all. Happy Mother's Day. Y'all take care and uh, y'all be safe. Bye. All right, Chloe, if you want to say hi, we waited on you.
There's Chloe. I couldn't leave Chloe out on Mother's Day. Y'all take care.